Jim, I want to come back to deal land. I'm going to do it in a favor report uh, and a because plan? this an and a plan. You got oh it. Oh my you God! Know. A man Doesn't plan matter what. Whether you're there or here, you know what I'm going to do. Uh, Toma Bravo cuts their uh, cuts the deal price. They agree to it. Anna Plan agrees to it. It's done. And perhaps you can thank them because if there had been a leak or what Anna Plan shares probably would have sunk a lot more than what is deserved for what is roughly a four percent cut. But it's still an interesting decision here by Toma Bravo in part because this is a company that is uh, relies on their reputation as being the big. Buyer of technology, high you know, high growth technology companies, and Mr. Bravo himself is an evangelist. He comes on our air oftentimes yeah. talking about all the benefits of going private, and so you always do wonder in these kinds of deals whether there's any reputational hit that the firm will suffer from. As you take a look at Anaplan, let me give you the reasons why they say they did it. Uh, by the way, it's 63.75 now. It had been 66 a share in cash. This is a very tight merger agreement. Uh, by the way, remember we were talking about merger agreements earlier. Well, this is really tight because he had, he basically was committed to the entire amount, whether he got financing or not. Uh, and he's got financing, but financing isn't even a part of it. Tight merger agreement, nonetheless, is what he said. Tomo Bravo and Anna Plant agreed to amend the merger agreement to resolve a disagreement between the parties regarding compliance with certain terms of the merger agreement. Toma Bravo asserted that these matters could have resulted in certain closing conditions not being satisfied. I don't know what they are, Jim. I wish I could tell you. I made a couple of calls. Nobody returned them. I don't know what those conditions were, whether it really was specific to Anna Plan or not, uh, because that has broader ramifications. There are other deals that Toma Bravo was in. For example, sale. Sale point. Take a look right. at SAIL shares. They're down in part because simply of fear as well. If they're doing this in Anaplan, maybe they're going to do it there too. If it really isn't as specific to Anaplan, what was it? I don't know. Uh, and so you got that stock down almost as much on a deal that nothing has happened to. And again, this is another deal in which Toma Bravo is buying the company. As for Mr. Bravo himself, you know, he was on, uh, Deirdre Trabosa had him on a few, couple of weeks back on uh, Tech Check. Um, and, you know, he continues to want to be the favored buyer of these kinds of companies in private equity. Take a listen. For us in private equity as a buyer and operator of software companies, this environment of five times forward revenue is the buying opportunity of a lifetime. There have been cheaper times in enterprise software. In the global financial crisis, we we're buying companies at two times revenue. After the dot-com bust, it was one to two. But enterprise software is nothing like it was in the past. Of course, it's very different now than it was when they bought Anaplan, Jim, which was a high multiple at a top in the market. So they got 4% off. Well, David, I don't know the way uh, Toma Bravo does pricing, but I do know Frank Calderoni, who is the CEO of Anaplan. And Frank is one of the most honorable, he used to be at Cisco, incredibly intelligent people I've seen. The idea that there may be something that Anna Plan did not show them, that's hard for me to believe, because Frank Calderoni, who, by the way, is a CFO, uh, is such an exacting and good person. I just cannot believe that there's anything that happened on the Anna Plan side. Of course, maybe it is, but to me it sounds like, David, uh, an opportunity to maybe buy it for kind of much more about what the, the market's saying. Remember, the market does no, has turned yeah. on companies that lose money. They've decided. Yep. And I, I listen to Mr. Bravo talk about great opportunity, and I say, well, he's rich. 